Hello and welcome back. This is MC1 Gamer bringing you uh, a battle report for Mordheim. So I had mentioned to some of the guys at the uh, one of the local stores I frequent that um, that I'd like to try out Mordheim. Um, I had seen Nick from Long Island War Gaming uh, putting up some videos about his campaign. Looked awesome, and. Anthony from the Sustainable Center had mentioned that he was interested in perhaps starting that up. I don't know if he's ever played it before. I used to play this game going back a long time, and I just forgot the rules completely. But these guys at this store here in Somerville, they do a summer campaign, which is very involved. And there's a lot of people that join it. Um, so I just started mentioning it to these guys. I said, hey, you know, uh, would anybody interested in, in, in maybe starting just, you know, a, a kind of a, a, a little bit less crazy of a campaign? But, you know, there's a couple of us that might be interested that haven't played in a while or haven't played at all. And a bunch of people jumped to it, uh, which was great. So we got a, uh, a game night um, uh, and four other guys showed up, myself. Um, Anthony wasn't able to make this one, um, but I'm sure that he's going to be a, a, a regular presence in future ones. And we got a bunch of games in. Um, this first one was merely just to really help, sh you know, show me a lot of the uh, the rules. And it was a five man, five uh, uh, war band uh, game. So uh, the Battle of the Five Armies. And uh, here's my war band. Now, I walked in. I, I put up another video with what I was going to put for my warband and I had gotten a lot of feedback from people about that about how to really build a warband at least from the outset and I was a little weirded out by the idea that you know you couldn't really tool up your characters but I'm in the mindset of Warhammer Fantasy you know you have a character you throw the best saves you can good weapons and that's just a big point sink when it comes to uh, Mordheim so if you're not familiar with Mordheim you want to get as many bodies as possible and as many heroes as possible because what you're doing is you're playing these games with these small bands in a uh, in a large kind of dilapidated destro destroyed city where you know people go in and it's um, and it, th there's a great deal of fluff with this but people go in and they look for treasures and you kind of you know your experience uh, can increase on your characters your heroes you have henchmen that could eventually uh, um, level up and, be, and get elevated to be uh, characters. You could um, you can uh, recruit more characters, more more bodies into your warband. You could find things. You're looking for things like warp stone, and you can purchase things with gold that you find. So you're kind of treasure hunting and also going out and sniping and, and trying to kill other warbands. So this is five warbands on a much on a very large uh, board, and 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 when these guys saw my list, they're like, no, 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 guy, listen, we, let me let us help you out. So they changed up my list a little bit. I have my uh, much less equipment on these guys, and the two beardlings that I had, they were initially going to have dual uh, dual pistols, um, brace of pistol, brace of um, uh, pistols, were um, are instead going to be my troll slayers. They said you got to max out as many characters as you can that you can bring because you get more rolls because there are more of these characters at the end of the game. And although characters can get knocked out and they can get severe injuries and whatnot, the more of these guys you have, the better chances you have of getting stuff and of advancing. So I was like, okay, fine. They, they helped me build my list, and I think you know I'm going to be better for it. So you can find these great equipment and maybe more expensive to purchase this stuff in future games, um, but it's apparently this is more of a marathon where I was kind of building for a sprint. So um, here's the board, and the one thing I also love about this game is that there's so much terrain. I mean, we could use 40k terrain in here, burnt out, destroyed buildings, but they have a board that was specifically built for um, for Mordheim, and it has these like trenches, these deep alleys, and these could each actually be canals for uh, for for waterways uh, if we wanted to. But there's lots of little pieces, and they managed to acquire a whole bunch of these um, these uh, destroyed or you know decrepit buildings and, um, and and ladders and there's lots of different rules that again I played this going back many years I played things like they're similar like Necromunda for example for like kind of the 40k ish version of this um, but it's been so long and then we actually had five people so we put up another board um, kind of half the half a board on the other side. So there's five armies. We in the center. Somebody had to get that unfortunate uh, 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 deplacement to be in the center. The Carnival of Chaos player had to deploy in the dead center, uh, which means he's kind of surrounded by everybody. Um, I managed to get my deployment in the uh, lower right, and I still have a lot of shooting. Uh, but so I positioned myself where I had some good arcs with uh, three of my uh, of my crossbowmen. And my other guys were just, you know, hiding behind the best terrain I could find. 
with the intent to go after what really is the eye, eye on the prize here. Everybody rolled up randomly to position these tokens all around the board. And uh, they're considered warp stone, uh, and if you get them, you can basically sell them at the end of the game to get more gold, which means you can buy more equipment, recruit more guys, um, and they're positioned all over the place. And there are rules on how you can position them. You can't position them too close to each other. You can't position them right next to a table edge. So but there's, with five people, there's plenty of them, and they're all over the place. So um, the, here's the Bretonians. So the Bretonian has one of these mounted knights, which is a whole lot of points. Um, I don't believe he took barding. He might have taken uh, um, heavy armor on this guy. I don't remember. I think he might have had a three-up save. Um, and he did qualify to get the lady's blessing. So any shooting at the knight is going to be is going to have to first pass a four-up test. Um, and any black powder um, is going to test, I think, against anybody in the army. So he's got a bunch of men-at-arms and archers. He's also got a uh, a a I believe it's a um, a questing knight on foot. The next uh, war band is a band of the possessed. These are all mutated, um, uh, chaos infused. Uh, some beastmen, some uh, kind of warriors of chaos types as well. Um, then the Reichlanders. So these are em empire uh, troops. Uh, lots of crossbowmen. Some of these young bloods, which are kind of like duelists. A bunch of guys with dueling pistols. Um, and then mine. So uh, I, when I get to go, and this is not necessarily in order because there was action going on all over the board. And it was, while we did obviously round robin as you would normally um, in these scenarios, there wasn't always something that would occur. So if you don't see a particular war band as I go through this, it's because maybe they just moved up a little bit or I just didn't take any, there weren't any good pictures. So I, I was right next to, I had actually deployed my engineer right next to one of the warp stone. So I managed to pick up the warp stone. Um, and... The carnival moves uh, in the center, moves to grab. There was a bunch of them in the center, uh, so he moves. And, and you can all you can move um, and then hide uh, if you don't take any other actions. So a number, if you see these guys like hiding behind buildings, uh, it, it, it's very much like that in this game where it's kind of like you know moving by you know by the numbers or in twos or you know some guys would advance to go and hide while covered by others. There's a lot of this that will go on with the, the movement is, and it's very interesting. But of course, you need. A, lot, a saturation of terrain to make that kind of work. You don't want a sparse terrain in Mordheim like you would have in some warm fantasy games where that could work. So uh, the, the Bretonians uh, fan out. One of the great advantages they have is he has a very fast-moving unit with the uh, with the knight. And then the possessed go and move up. Now the possessed are moving up along the the, the far side of the board edge from me, um, and are looking to close in with the Reichlanders. And of course, they're going to bump heads. I'm sure with the um, with the Carnival of Chaos as well. And the Chaos, the Carnival of Chaos, managed to get several warp tokens. One of the things about these warp tokens is you you pick them up. It does take your movement to do so um, or your action to do so. Um, but once you pick them up, you've got to keep the token with that particular uh, uh, character. And if, if that character dies, the token drops right there. So you have to survive with that token. And the Reichlanders uh, uh, aim some of their crossbows. He's got a bunch of these uh, these uh, sniper positions. And he managed to kill one of the uh, carnival henchmen. Or rather, knock him out of action, it's called. Because it's not determined to be... You're not determined to be dead until... The after uh, the game where you actually roll up on various charts. Um, and then my dwarves uh, move towards the bridge. I've got the two troll slayers and my dwarf noble. Um, and then my engineer aims at one of the uh, the uh, carnival heroes. You can see him. I had a really good beat on him. That's one of the things also you should know about this game if you have several players, more than just one-on-one, -on -one, is that arcs of fire... Uh, you really can. You really are hard pressed when you have multiple people, more than two you know, two players, um, to try and cover yourself. Yes, you can hide, but if anybody can see you um, from, I guess, a 180 degree uh, vantage point um, from where you are on one side of that line, um, it ruins your ability to hide. If there's any intervening um, terrain, any obstacles, you're able to hide. You don't need a whole lot to be able to declare that you're hiding. But um, I had a great beeline on this guy. Uh, he wasn't able to hide, but I was able to, um, uh, but he did get hard cover. So I went and I shot at him, and I managed to not only hit him, wound him, but I knocked him out of action. Um, the Bretonian archers uh, uh, take aim, and from all the way across here, they've got some pretty good range, a 30-inch range. They start taking shots at me, uh, my engineer, who was behind good cover facing the middle of the board, but not against these guys. But it was just long range, and he doesn't have the greatest ballistic skill. 
Um, and then he moves his knight, he has the, uh, the dismounted knight, um, towards where one of these warp stones were in this building. The Carnies move around and they, they, you know, they're just trying to get cover wherever they can because they've got armies all around them. Um, and then the Reichlander um, aims at another Carney with the uh, crossbow and knocks him out of action. Um, and my dwarves, you know, I just, I, I, there was, I'm not going to go run across there. I thought maybe I could run across this bridge and walk to the other side and then just step down onto the box. I later learned that I could have done that. Um, but instead I just decided to drop. And what I learned was, is if you do take a jump, you're taking an initiative check, not the thing you want to do if you're a, uh, if you're dwarves. Because I only have, for the most part, initiative two. And, um, my, uh, I fail with my noble, but he doesn't get injured. Both my troll uh, slayers move up towards that objective, the warp stone. And then I aim my uh, engineer at the uh, the upstart Bretonian uh, archer that tried to take a, you know, a, a shot at me, and of course um, I miss. Um, and that, and then the Bretonians, that knight, you know, he should be just trudging, he should be trotting through the, uh, through the streets without any concern. Uh, you know, he's, he's a Bretonian knight, but yet he is going from building the building taking up all kinds of cover. Uh, and that's smart, but it just, <laughs> I just, I, I, I would have thought it would have been cooler, especially with the lady's blessing, just to kind of, you know, not with any, without any care, a pompous knight just walking through the streets and having crossbow bolts and arrows just whizzing by them. Uh, but instead, this guy is like really taking the, uh, the, uh, the careful approach. So the possessed further move up, um, uh, moving towards the middle and towards the Reichlanders. Um, the Carnies continue to hide. I think they're moving around trying to get as many of these tokens as they can. Um, the Reich Reichlanders nab another stone. He's, he's just, he had a lot of guys. So they're cheap. Uh, some of them are pretty are amazing for what they get. Um, but he just fanned out and just gathered up as many of these stones as he could. Um, and he further, it's one of the young bloods. Uh, I don't know if he has any, any dueling pistols, but he's got, I think he has a sword and a dagger. So I managed to get with one of my troll slayers the uh, the warp stone that's in the trench, and now there's another one that's beyond those barrels. So you know I'm not moving very fast. I'm on my dwarves. I've got base moving three. I run at six. So I run my the noble and the uh, troll slayer as far as I can past this point, try and get within uh, striking range of that of that um, the other warp stone. Um, and then I take another shot. Um, I shoot at uh, his Reichlander uh, crossbowman. Um, I hit him. Fail to wound. Um, and then the Bretonian knight with his 16 move, I think it is. Um, uh, and I, I think that's how it works. I'm not sure if you can run in the, in the game with, with, with horses, but I guess you can because he, I don't know, I didn't even see where he was. He was nowhere within view. Just comes up and swoops in and tries to steal my prize. Now, I try to shoot him with one of my crossbows uh, uh, after this and uh, fail, uh, fail to hit him. Um, so... He has a knight in one of these buildings that went after one of these warp stone tokens, and the carnies are starting to converge on him, so the knight uh, goes ahead and attacks one of these carnies. Um, the possessed clo further close in on the Reichlanders. Um, they should be able to get within, but he's taking a very careful approach. He's also, be, you have to be meticulous. If you just run guys right out there, they're just going to get sniped off by anybody with crossbows or um, any kind of long-range weapons. So it is, does behoove you to, to take it slow and go, you know, again, building the building. Um, and then one of the Reichlanders crossbowmen not only hits me with a six, wounds me with a six, which is a critical hit, knocks me out of action, which sucks. This is my engineer. And you only can have one engineer. And when if you lose a guy, it's very hard to get him back. It caught, you, know, you have to roll very well in the after game uh, tables. So I'm really hoping that he's just knocked out of action and that I'm not going to actually lose him. So he's out of action. And, uh, you know, I've, I want to take I want to I want to take. Uh, revenge, but you know what? I want to get this token because he dropped the token where he was. I had a crossbowman for down now by those boxes, so I rolled to go and get up, and uh, I managed to jump up and take his uh, position. But this time, I managed to stay right behind that wall so that at least the crossbowman uh, wouldn't be able to shoot me. I don't care about the Bretonian archers; they don't have a ballistic skull worth a damn. And then I further move up my um, my the rest of my troops to try and get within hopeful range of that um, of that. Uh, Bretonian knight. I'm hoping that I can taunt him to charge. I mean, my 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 uh, dwarves are shaking their fists and you know screaming uh, slurs at him, 
But Bretonian turn comes up, and you know I started d- uh, dubbing this guy Brave Sir Robin because Brave Sir Robin didn't charge the 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 dwarves that were easily within his range. No, no, Brave Sir Robin turned his tail and ran away. And you could see that he not only is he running away, but he's all still hiding, still hiding in the rubble. So he took my prize, swiped it, and now he's running off. This is chivalry. This is not chivalry. So the possessed uh, further advance on the Reichlanders. I think they managed to actually get into combat, uh, but I, they, I think they lost one um, uh, on the advance from one of the crossbowmen. Um, this Carney starts swarming this knight. So this is a, a dismounted knight. I think he's got decent armor, shield and, uh, and, a, and a hammer. And now there's like three um, Carnies in there, and one of the men-at-arms uh, actually came up to help him. But nobody is knocked out or has been injured. So I make my moves. Uh, I'm in this trench. There's no warp stone anywhere near me. I'm nowhere near where anybody is where I could probably charge or get within range to get in hand to hand. So now my decision is, you know what? I better just hunker down with these guys. I want to keep that warp stone, and I don't want to be put myself in a position where any of these uh, shooters can actually shoot me because I'm still probably within the long range of some of these crossbows. But why take a chance? Um, and I try to. I can, you could see. I could just see the. The both both butt cheeks of the horse uh, of the uh, of the running away brave Sir Robin. Um, so the thunderer who took the perch from the uh, the now fallen engineer takes a bead on him and goes to shoot him. And I fail my 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 save for the lady. The lady protects this knight, which I guess is fluffy and appropriately fitting for a Bretonian. I just think it would be more appropriate if this wasn't such a cowardly knight. If he, I think the fact that he ran away, he should have lost the blessing right there. Um, so the Carnies drop two of the Bretonians. One of them is an archer, one of men at arms. But they're still uh, kind of they're still in battle with the um, with one more of their archers and a um, and the knight. The Reichlanders uh, um, pull up their uh, they have two pistoliers of some type and they take down an, uh, one of the Carney henchmen that was hiding. Um, and then the Reichlanders t- take aim with one of their crossbowmen through a window and hit one of these, uh, one of the possessed, um, and then knocks him out of action. Um, and then uh, the game is over. We had made up in advance that because it was five people in the game, that if it would come to pass that two people were knocked out of action, two of the five, we'd end the game, and then we would tally up everything that we had at that point, everything everybody would get, whatever they had. And then we would start doing the the, uh, the rolls. So the aftermath of a Mordheim game is very interesting. That's where kind of most of the fun seems to be, be because then you see what the results are of the combat. I mean, it's a lot of fun playing the game, obviously, but it actually is. It's kind of a lead into the to the next game because now you get to see what happened to all your guys. Did they gain enough experience points to hit a milestone where they could potentially get uh, a stat uh, increase or other benefits? Maybe they get to a point where one of your henchmen can now elevate to the point where he's now uh, a hero. Uh, you could take your gold that you've acquired um, and with stuff that you've found, and you can sell it and then maybe try to hire more people. You want more bodies. You want to grow your war band. The more bodies you have, obviously, the more things you can lose. If you've lost people, you could try to replace them. Um, I went to roll for my for, for uh, my engineer, and my engineer died permanently. He was completely killed, and a couple other people lost uh, also lost some of their members. But uh, I believe mine was the only character. The others were henchmen throughout, scattered throughout the other f- uh, four warbands. So this was really, really debilitating for me because my engineer gives me a huge ability. He increases the range of all my missile weapons substantially, crossbows and handguns by six inches. By, 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 um, by six inches and three inches on any pistols. So that's a big, that's great for the dwarves. Uh, but now I don't have a, a, um, a, an engineer, so I have to find a new one. But I wasn't able to find a new one, but I'm going to save the gold and I'm going to get a new engineer at some point. Uh, but I was able to get uh, a, um, some stat increases. Um, I got a, a thun- another Thunderer. My Thunderer group now is Ballistic Skill 4. Um, and so you can purchase all kinds of things. You've got to roll to see if you can acquire something, um, if you want to chase it, so that you can go and purchase it. You can get things that give you re-rolls or benefits for future, uh, future rolls, uh, future games. 
So you could start acquiring things, and then you roll on tables when you there's treasure to be found and whatnot. So you might find armor or uh, you know or, or swords or various stuff, and then you can start equipping your guys. And unlike in Warhammer Fantasy, where if you've got something, it stays on that particular character. In this game, you can interchange them. So pretty interesting. My war my war band is kind of kind of dropped in its rating. Uh, and uh, because I lost the engineer, even though I gained another, uh, a, 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 I actually pushed my warband up to from six to seven. Um, I got a beardling, which is very cheap, very uh, um, kind of green, uh, not proven in lower stat, but very cheap uh, dwarf warrior uh, to add to my um, to uh, my my warband. And I got another thunderer. So I'm hoping that in some future game, I'm going to collect the coins that I can bring that engineer back, and then uh, I'll have enough. Uh, 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 coins at that time that I can purchase him, but you have to roll on a particular table and roll well so that you have the right, you have enough experience points that you can go and, and purchase that guy back. So there's Mordheim. I hope you'd enjoy, you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it before, I'm going to do a bunch more of these. And, uh, you know, you don't, you don't, you're not painting up an entire army. At most, maybe you'll need 10 or 12 models over the course of time. Uh, and it's a lot of fun, and it's interesting, and it's also something you can do in less than an hour for each game. So, hope you enjoyed it, and keep, out, keep an eye out for more of these. Have a great day, everybody.